This looks like a job for Superman. While gaming mysteries often kept me coming back to my favorite games as a kid, it wasn't always for the thrill of the hunt. Sometimes it was to share the experiences with our friends and siblings, or even to reinvent the game for ourselves. We often made up our own stories and challenges to keep the game fresh, and it's pretty neat to think back on them. Whether it was eliminating elements of the game, creating a hierarchy of challenges we had to defeat, or changing the role of our character, creativity was at the root of it all. Now a lot of these weren't quite to the level of speedrunners or .5a presses, but for as simple as they were, they were a blast. This video will be about some of those games that we created within other games, and I hope in the end you'll share some of your own in the comment section. One of the staples of my childhood was Super Mario 64. All the stages in this game had plenty of replay value, and we would often run around them thinking of new things to do all the time. One of the most prominent things I remember is having Mario assume the role of a pizza delivery man, and having to deliver said pizzas to the stage's boss or simply the end of the level. You would have to carry around this crate made of cork-like material through the entire level, and if the crate broke, you were fired from your job. It was sometimes surprisingly difficult to navigate with the crate, and if you jumped against certain creases in the level geometry, your crate would become dislodged from your hands or simply shatter. However, in order to make your delivery on time, you had to rapidly jump to increase Mario's speed. Mario becomes slow, so to bypass the slowness, a series of short hops could give Mario the momentum needed to reach his destination faster. Sometimes we would change the end goal of where the box needed to go to mix up the game a bit too. We consider the two blocks at the bottom of the Babam battlefield the pizzeria, as the two large cork boxes were considered our oven, so to speak. On my original copy of Mario 64, you could drop the cork box between the seams of the larger blocks, and then pick up the quote unquote pizza when it was done. For as simple as a concept as this was, we had a lot of fun creating in game stories that our pizza delivery man had to partake in. As a side note, one of my favorite Mario 64 in-game challenges is actually what people refer to as a Green Demon Challenge. Back in 2008, or perhaps even earlier, two Japanese players were attributed with creating this challenge, which involves collecting all 8 red coins in a level before a 1-Up Mushroom touches you. When a 1-Up Mushroom appears in Super Mario 64, most of the time it runs away from Mario. But there are a few in the game that when spawned actually chase after Mario, or rather, hunt Mario down by any means possible. They float through the air while trying to be claimed. But this is where the challenges stem from. While this mushroom is in hot pursuit, you have to collect all 8 red coins in the level and then claim the star before the mushroom touches you. It's actually a ton of fun, but also very difficult because you can never stop moving and you have to constantly add distance between you and the mushroom. Since the mushroom can fly and pass through walls, it makes it all the more challenging. I highly recommend watching some videos online about this challenge, as it can be quite humorous. Passing over to another Super 64, we have everyone's favorite, Superman 64. Or maybe no one's favorite. Regardless though, somehow I enjoyed this game as a kid even if I can't seem to properly control it now. When we were younger, we would boot up practice mode on this game and one of us would leave the room while the other person hid the car somewhere in the world. Upon returning, it was up to the other person to find the car. Now, this car could be anywhere. On the ground, up in the sky, underwater, or merged between boundaries. It was essentially a game of hide and seek, except you're seeking a parked car, and you're drunk and having the worst time trying to navigate. We often had a lot of fun with this, but going back to it now, I'm very surprised at how hard it is to move around in this game. I guess I really never noticed it as a kid. For those who watched my Pixel Portal video on GoldenEye, which I highly recommend, we often made up our own stories in this game as well. Starting off, we had a scenario where a cat was stuck in an event, and Animal Control had to come and get the cat out. However, this feline was extremely violent, and threw knives. This cat was actually just James Bond crouch walking, er, sliding through the level facility. We also had the same scenario at other levels too, and pretty much any place that had vents was a great choice for it. Another game type we would do involved locking someone up in the prison cell at the level bunker. We essentially recreated the one player version of the game to some degree, and there would be two players who played soldiers, and one person who had to escape. However, before this player escaped, they had to visit several rooms in the compound to take documents. Obviously these documents weren't actually there, but in the good spirit of the game they were. 
If the escapee died at all during their venture, they would have to start locked back up in the cell again, whereas the soldiers could just respawn. It was actually a very difficult task since you couldn't restore health, and the other players you fought weren't exactly pushovers like the NPCs on single player. Very few times did we actually escape, but the thrill of the challenge is what kept us going. Swinging over to the GameCube, in Super Smash Bros. Melee we would have special matches on stamina mode that we deemed as Pokemon battles. This would require four controllers, as each person would pick a Pokemon trainer and a Pokemon to play as. All humans were viable Pokemon trainers, while we pretty much grouped all the other characters as Pokemon as time went on. We started off with just four Pokemon, Pikachu, Pichu, Mewtwo, and Jigglypuff. But then eventually led in Yoshi, and from there everyone else became viable. Essentially, this is how the fights worked. You would select a Pokemon and trainer and assign them to the same team with Friendly Fire off. At the start of the match, players 1 and 4 would go to the edges of the stage as they were the Pokemon trainers. Then we were swapped to the Pokemon on controllers 2 and 3, and duke it out in the middle of the stage. If your Pokemon was defeated, the trainer then had to battle the remaining Pokemon until it could no longer fight, or they were defeated themselves. You weren't allowed to harm the trainers until this point though, and as we played this more and more, the rules became more complicated. At some point, we introduced Pokeballs and healing items that only trainers could grab, and this often led to huge amounts of damage as you were tossed around by 3 or 4 Pokemon at a time. These matches went by very fast, but we would make up different storylines and gyms that the protagonist trainer had to go through. We would get hours of enjoyment out of this, and to some degree, it never got stale. Occasionally my brothers and I will sit down and still do this today, and it seems like no time has passed at all. This is really only the start of games we played within other games. But, of course, I'd love to hear about your own experiences. What games did you invent in other games? What sort of challenges did you develop? And did you have anyone else partake in these challenges? It doesn't matter if it was a game from the past or a game from today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you want to see a competitive variant of the Super Mario 64 Pizza Delivery Challenge, I just got done playing it with a friend of mine. It was actually pretty darn difficult, but it was a lot of fun. There's a link at the end of the video. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this imaginative journey through some classic titles. If you'd like to join me in my YouTube voyage and continue to celebrate the past, present, and future of gaming, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. You've made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. If you liked this video, I highly recommend checking out the Mario 64 Pizza Box Challenge video on the right, or you can watch another video on the left. Perhaps consider giving this video a like or share so the channel can grow as well, as I'd greatly appreciate it. As always, there's a slew of other videos on my channel too, so regardless, I hope you enjoy.